check, check. Cool. Everything good? You can hear me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Uncle John Prime. I'm an artist with 808 Urban. And with me, I have Kukui. Uh, she's also an artist. Um, and she's the one that's running the organization now. So what we do is we specialize in like in in mentoring youth and guiding them in from from one place to the other place using art. So we get our kids to not focus on graffiti or destruction, but really focusing on storytelling and building our you know our history. Right? How many of you guys grew up? in Nanakuli. Everybody? Yeah. But how many of you guys know the history or where, where you grew up? Oh, in Pololo. Where? Pololo. Pololo. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty similar. The hawk, the chicken, same thing. Yeah, I grew up in Pololo too. Yeah, so I know those stories. <clears throat> but Nanakuli is a really, really fascinating story because when I first moved to this, this area in 1985, I, I didn't know anything except the fact that this place is really hot and hotter than Pololo for sure. Yeah, so coming from Pololo to, to Waianae, it was just, it, it was life changing. But what, and I didn't like it in the beginning. I, I, I couldn't stand the country just because it moved too slow. Like growing up in town, everything was just fast paced, right? So I was used to that algorithm. But what I, what I learned after one year, I told myself like the first month, I, I can't wait to move out, out of the country. I can't stand the country. But after one year, I said, oh man, I don't ever want to go back to town. I love the country. And it was because of the people. Right? Learning my relationship with the people and learning like how they interact with each other. Uh, it, it really built this special place in my heart. Right. So for 25 years, I, I lived and I raised my kids on, on this side, but there was something missing. I didn't know anything about this place. And so this mural was kind of like the first, one of the first ones that, that we did where I got to learn about this place, about Nana Kuli and what it means. And so before I get into the story part, I kind of want to explain the, our process. So our process is is unique because it's it's um it's something that we've developed over over some time, and it's it's also not unique because it's it's just a reflection of our elder teachings, right? So our kupuna teachings. And so, are you folks familiar with microbes? You guys know what microbes are, like the tiny little things that kind of make up everything in the world. Yeah, so it's the energy, it's the, it's the life system, it's the life support, it's everything. Without microbes, we pretty much don't have anything, right? And the Hawaiian word for microbes is akua, right? So akua translated to English is God. Right? And so it's this akua that we focus on in the first two steps. So the first step is called mana lima. Okay. You guys know what mana means? Yeah, well, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mana, no, yeah. Right He's talking about the hands. Like they put their yeah. hand on the wall. What are they doing? Yeah, they put their mana on the wall, right? their energy on the wall. What is the opposite of mana? Womana. No, sorry. That's what you <laughs> There's mana and womana. <laughs> the womana. <laughs> yeah, womana always wins. <clears throat> so the hand, right? Mana, uh, mana lima, 
Lima meaning the hand. Yeah, so it's all of these, the energy of the hands that went into it from the students at that time, right? So that, that's, the, that's the base. And we use the colors of Kea Nui Nui, which is the rainbow, right? And if you grew up Palolo, you would know you get plenty of rainbows in Palolo Valley. Yeah, so the, all of these colors, we had them put their hands inside and kind of put it all over the place. And some went extra, but you can't see it because it got the black, right? The second part of, of this mural is the Pili Aloha. And the Pili means to join or to bring together, yeah. Um, aloha is the love. So bringing together this love in that process, it's the love of our land. And so we, uh, well, not we, but so, somebody went to gather some water from uh, Uncle Eric Eno's guys uh, up in Mount Kaala. And we use that water to mix in with the paint to do the second layer, which is the greens, the reds, the purples, right? So now we have the DNA of the, the place. The first, the first uh, Mauna Lima part is the DNA of, of the people. The second part is the DNA of the place. And then the third part is the, the Mo'olelo. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. So the third part is the Mo'olelo. Uh, and for this one, for this one, I believe we start with Tina. Yeah, and so um, I don't know the student's name. Um, that, so what I did was, as, as I was sitting and I was observing, I was observing energy. And Wash your face. You still gotta wear your mask. <laughs> yeah. So the story starts off with Hina. You guys know who Hina is? In the Hawaiian legend, yeah. Hina is the goddess of the moon. Right? Hina gave birth to to Maui. You know why we started doing the story of Maui here? You guys know the name of this mountain right here? Haleakala. Is there another Haleakala somewhere else? Where? In Maui? Okay, so my question to you guys is, where was Maui born? In Maui? Right? It's a good question, right? He was born here, yeah, just on the other side, yeah. Maui was born here, and then he raised the island. Right? He didn't raise the islands, and then you know it didn't work that way. So he was born here, and pulled up the rest of the island. And that's the story, yeah. So that's how it all begins, right? With the story of Maui, and so on that side, you kind of have like. There's another student that like if Maui was from Ragnarok, that's how I see Maui with a lot of lightning and all of this cool stuff. Right, and then these two, uh, like this red area that you see, that's the the same.
in the purple area, so this is, we go from the black, the pole, which is the beginning, right? And then from here, we move over to uh, the purple area of the pony, and then we started to do that, that Maui hook there. Oh, shit, I didn't notice the white stuff over the hook. Right. It looks weird until somebody points it out that it's it's that. And then the rest of the white that you see is like the reflection on the top of the water. So where Maui gets these two items is in this place called Milu, right? Which is the underworld. In the underworld, if you if you ever been to Nanakuli Beach, camping on Nanakuli Beach, you look out and then there's an area that just turns really black. Like back in the 80s when we used to go diving with my uncle, he said, hey, we're just going to dive all the way to the black and then we're going to turn back. I always wondered how come we never went past the black. But when you reach that shelf, you just get this like chicken skin feeling like, yeah, I don't belong here. Let us do that. And that's the feeling that we got when we went, not knowing that that was the entrance to Milu. And so what Maui does is he goes to Milu, visits his tutu. Yeah, his grandmother. And then he tells his grandmother, you know, there's this Ulua fish over here that's been, you know, terrorizing the fishermen. And the fishermen asked me for help. So I attempted to catch this Ulua thinking that it was a normal Ulua, but it's, it's definitely not a normal Ulua. And I need help. And so the grandmother says, well, <clears throat> what else are you going to do? He was like, well, I was also thinking while I'm at it, I might as well just, you know, capture the sun and then I might as well pull up some islands while I'm while I'm at it. So Tutu tells him, in order for you to do all of those things, you have to, you're going to need like a strong hook, right? So what she does is she, she gives him his magical canoe, right? Because in order for him to pull this magical hook, he needs a magical canoe. Yeah. So she gives him the canoe. And then she removes her jawbone, right? And then she gives him the jawbone. So Maui's hook is actually the female jawbone. And that's why we did it like that. Yeah, you can't see the teeth because the tree's in the way right now. Oh, I see. Okay. But we put teeth on it. We purposely kind of like, it's, it's not the Disneyland or the Disney fish hook that everybody, you know, Thinks and there's other cultures that believe it's a fish hook. It's actually, a, according to the story here in Nanakuli, is it's the female jawbone. So he takes all of this stuff. He takes the jawbone home, and then he goes to see his mom. He said, "Ma, guess what? Tutu gave me this. Show him the jawbone. Tell him about the canoe." And she was like, "That's good, boy. But how are you gonna pull the hook?" He was like, "Oh." Um, I was just going to kind of make rope. You know, well, the rope gonna burn if you're gonna pull the sun. Yeah, the thing gonna break if you try pulling the ulua. You're gonna need something magical, like magical rope. So Hina has long, long hair. She cuts her hair, she braids it, and that's what he uses to pull the hook. Yeah, so that's why we have all of these braids in purple. Going from the hook and into into the cosmos because it's supposed to you know represent magic and all of the, the unknown right and so the moral of the story is without the females in our lives you know for for us men that accomplish things without the females in our lives then we cannot do anything yeah that's why if you look at our chiefs they have this what they call a niho palawa it's a it's a necklace that has the braids of their ancestors and then the tooth of the whale right? that's that's the representation of this story does that make sense yeah so honor your mother honor your your grandmother honor all of the females in your family because if you don't you cannot pull up islands or capture sun or catch tricky fish okay any questions about this part of the Moolelo? Like Stories, yeah. Come on, I can't
years together all year. Telling a story. Ready? Okay. Yeah, say it again. What? What did you say? What did you say? What did you say? What did you say? What did you It's it's in the word. Yeah. So there's mo'o, there's lelo. Yeah, lelo is speak. Mo'o is what? Lizard. Yeah. We speak yeah. lizard. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you really think about it, mo'o is the guardian of the water. What is the water? The water is life. The water is in our body, it's in the land, it's in everything. Yes, it's very good. Life story. So, so that's that's the way to look at more levels. It's not just bells. Yeah, so Mo'olelo is not your average story, let's say. It's, it's a continuation of water. It's speaking of how the water goes and how the water moves through observation and through experience. That's Mo'olelo, yeah. So if you look behind, so you have this here and then behind all of this shiny white stuff, you see these, these like holes that are upright. Yeah, let's go take a walk. You notice the shape here? What shape is that? Right? So without even saying Ulua or actually painting any Ulua, it's already in the background. So those that know the story can, can point to this and say, this is the, the part of the Ulua. But what's this part right here? Yeah, and then it goes into the blue too. This is, the way I have it set up is, is like it's the DNA strand. Right? And that DNA strand, you guys know what DNA is, right? So this DNA strand could be the DNA of any, anything. It could be the DNA of Maui. And what is the DNA of Maui? This place, right? So yeah, moving on into the blue section. We have more DNA. Why is this one here? This is the Kalo, yeah? Yeah, so this shape in the back is the shape of the Kalo. Um, yeah, all of this stuff here. It's going back to the DNA of Kaloa, the DNA of us. Of of the Kanaka and kind of addressing that in this section of the mural. And then, yeah, so if you look close, you see everybody's handprint, right? Yeah. But from far, you can't really see it. All you see is just kind of like some texture, but it, it was designed for you to come up close and look at it and then see one thing and then step back and see something else, yeah. So that's the blue section. More Kahlo and DNA. Oh, and then we go into this Kahlo. And why did we talk about this section? It was because of this. So we get into Okay, so this is the area that Kukui worked on. Um, and in this area, we talk about the kupu kupu fern. And yeah. 
Yeah. His story was just unbelievable. And he was talking about the water that still exists in the mountain. Kamapua, like, oh, unreal. And that's that's what's important is like for you kids, you have to you have to build that connection with your kupuna, right? Because when they're gone, there goes the stories and there goes the history, there goes the mo'olelo. Yeah, so it's, it's really, really important. We got to spend time with a lot of folks and learn like of the 25 years or so that I, I was here, I learned more in, in the one week just talking to Kupuna than I did like for the past 25 years. Yeah, so uh, moving on to the rest of the green section, it's more of kind of like that foresty feel. We have some Lawai in the back. And yeah, that's it, right, for this section? Then we get into the Golden Hawk. Uh, this was done by uh, another student of mine, Jesse. Uh, unbelievable artist. And this is all done with spray paint. Yeah, so his technique is, is just on point. But you guys know why the Golden Hawk? I didn't know how many used to fly in this area way back when. The hawk was so big, it picked up a pig. Wow. <laughs> that wasn't a pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It might have looked bigger in the floor, but I cannot imagine how big one of these anyway. I watch a lot of national geographic and I'm just amazed. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I transplant here. so. I try to teach them about their their valley as much as I possibly can and mm -hmm. where they come from. But I don't even I've never questioned why it's the hawk. Now you're getting me like I'm not <laughs> That's the thing, yeah. We we take it for granted, like all of those that went to Wyoming. 
have they ever seen a sea rider? And what is a sea rider? It has nothing to do with Waianae at all. It was just something that somebody outside, right? A Malihini said, oh, this should be a sea rider. Okay, shoot. But is it Waianae at all? No, not at all, right? So maybe that's one that they need to change. The hawk I can see because they used to exist here, you know, once upon a time. And one of the understanding, uh, understandings of the hawk is that it's the closest to heaven. It's the closest to Akua. Right? So that's the messenger from Akua. And so like, so I think Nanakuri's mascot is unreal. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh. oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, Rufu, you remember this one? So this... Yeah, well, so these are the, I'm not exactly sure why we put Kanehuna Moku here. My guess is that it's tied into the Va'a somehow, right? The magical Va'a of Maui. Um, but Basically, this is the, the, the floating islands of Kane. Um, there's a mo'olelo uh, about these islands. They're magical and, and the guys on the ocean, they see them. Like, there's one story of this uncle out in uh, Kaneohe that sees Kane Hunamoku, sees this island on the ocean, paddles towards the island and then it disappears. And he turns around and he sees it on the other side. So he paddles. And it disappears. Basically, when you go on onto this, you're no you're no longer in this realm, right? And so, like in my mind, there's all of these different realms that we can travel to, and this this golden liquid that you see coming out of this apu is is the ava. Is that why we did it, the ava? Yeah. So, just the ava and and the experience of of being in that that state of, of meditation through Ava, that connection to the place that you cannot really, if you have a hard time connecting physically here, um, the ceremonies that's designed using Ava and to take you to another place. Like when we, when we think about things outside of the physical realm, we like to look at, we like to use Ava to kind of move us in that space. And then from there, then we can start seeing a lot more uh, of whatever the more level is that we're trying to study. So that's the reason why we did this too. <laughs> yeah. I know people that like, they drink all the time, but it's not to go into that realm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and so the Ava is kind of like, I believe that's why, one of the reasons why we did the Ava coming into this area is because uh, the Leeward Coast is primarily uh, like associated with Kane and not just Kane of the God of water, but Kane, the sun. Yeah, that's the other form of Kane is the sun. And, and so the, here you have the different, the different representations of sun or Kane, we have the child in the umbilical cord, kind of like nestled in this, right, in, in the mother's womb. If, if, this, if the sun is the center of the universe, right, this idea that the child sits in the sun of the mother. And so here you have this duality from one place, you have extreme hot, extreme heat, and then the other side is ocean, aligned with the ocean. And, and I, I believe this one, there's a specific part of this building that's tied into the, uh, one of the solstices. I think it's summer solstice that peaks up in one of the areas. So this, this alignment is also um, the reason why it's over here versus anywhere else because of its alignment with the sun rising and then setting on that side. 
during summer solstice. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? No. We just go walk around. Uh, anybody have any idea what this might be? What? Man, it's for the students, not the teacher. But you gotta test them, see if they're paying attention. <laughs> Can anybody tell me what this is that's connected to the baby over here? <laughs> oh, very good, awesome. So what is this? Water, what's the Hawaiian word for water? Hawaiian word for water, anyone? No. No. It's bai. You guys say it with me. Bai. 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 How many bai's is that? Bai. 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 Yeah, you know why vai? What, what is it? What? It's in our name. It's in Hawaii. Do you know? There's ha, there's vai, and there's e. It's in Waiana, right? It's important because it's the it's the water. But what water are we talking about? The one that. Uh, are we talking about the one at uh, Second City? No? Talking about all the waters. Yeah. The ocean, the streams that used to be here. Right? We're made up of water. Everything is made up of water. I mentioned that earlier. Yeah. So this, this water is important. Because <clears throat> it's the first thing it's the first thing that connects us to our genealogy. Yeah. When a Hawaiian asks you, Hawaii oi, if you break down that question, oi is you, vai is water. So when you think about it from an English point of view, you think, oh, that doesn't make sense. It means water you. But from a Kanaka standpoint or perspective, it's what is the name of your first water? And what is the name of your first water? What is the name of your first water? Mom. Because for nine months, she had to carry you in her water. Yeah. And then when you're ready to come out or when she kick you out, that's the first thing that come out is water. Yeah. And then you. That's the first water. Yeah. Yeah. The first air that you take is when you start to fly. It's the first yelp you give when you come sliding up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did in that. Your guys' first nine months of so called life. <laughs> Is in water. Yeah. So we should be natural swimmers. Right. I mean, you swam that far to get there in the first place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. I know uh, someone that carried for twenty-two months, oh. almost two years. Baby was in the water. Oh, and it's, yeah. It's all documented. And then his next baby was fifteen months. Is it late? Like I said, there's there's the English way of looking at things, and there's the Hawaiian way of looking at things. And in the so old custom, person, yeah, what Hawaiian? Hawaiian, yeah, he's my brother. <laughs> when the baby ready, the baby, baby ready. I yeah. that's, that's yeah. my, I mean, that's my biological interest. 
Yeah. So yeah, it's not gonna be a matter. Yeah. We got it out of it. At some the one Monday, at that time, the two months early. I mean it's yep. twenty two months and and fifteen months. <laughs> no, she's she's mellow, but she's like she's really smart. Oh him. Uh, what, no, no, there's two kids that play. One one is twenty two months and the other is fifteen. The the girl, the daughter is fifteen months. And then the son is twenty two months. Yeah. Uh how old is Baba? Boy, uh, the boy, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we have the the Vili Vili, right? The golden one that we talked about earlier. But we have all of these bubbles. Right? What is the bubbles? Yeah, there's no right or wrong. Yeah. Because I'm guessing myself. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's the breath. You need the breath in order to form the bubble. Right? When you put the stick out, you got to put the breath into the, the bubble. Yep. But what happens when the rain comes, right? and it hits the surface of the rock, there's this explosion. That explosion is called hua, right? And it's the first breath of God, because it's coming from the heaven, right? So here we, we're just kind of like in a, in a real subtle way, we're talking about the breath, we're addressing the breath and then we're Addressing the the water, the ha, the vai, and the e or the source. Without really saying, it. yeah. It's just those I can sit here and just kind of like like figure out the little riddles that we put in in all of these things. I mean anybody, any anybody notice like if you start from this part, right? It's Black and then they kind of start with the red over there. Go yeah. purple, going to blue, going to green, kind of get that yellow. Over there, yellow is over here, but get that. Red. I don't know, the red part is. <laughs> yeah. And then get the yellow over here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's the first thing I recommend when I like, send back. Yeah. You see this rainbow effect more clear in the other building. Yeah. 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 We had to. We couldn't go in chronological order because of we we aligned ourselves more with the sun, the path of the sun and the sunset. Yeah. And then we move into like. The last part here. Uh, what was this one? Uh, off the no, but this one. Oh, that was just part of the Vili Vili, yeah. Yeah. So this is Papa and Wakia, and we use, I believe he was a school teacher. He, I think he taught Japanese. Yeah, really, it's like beautiful demeanor, really soft and gentle. Oh, okay. So yeah, I use I use his side profile, and then I kind of built the clouds around them to give them like this really soft, cloudy feel, as if he's a sky father, 
And then this was another student that we used to represent Earth Mother. And that's how we close off this space. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah. yeah. I tried to I ordered the wine. My grandfather was pure wine, but I had to go drug treatment to learn what it meant to be the wine. <laughs> so, I'm still yeah. learning my. I still, I gotta take some wine classes. Let me learn. I got one for you guys. And this is gonna upset a lot of people, but this is just my own manao. What is Hawaiian? Are you Hawaiian? Yeah. Are you Hawaiian? Are you Hawaiian? Everybody? Yeah. Tara, are you Hawaiian? I say no, okay, Tara. You know where I'm going with this, yeah? Is she Hawaiian? Yes. Yeah. Why? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And if we look at Hawaiian as a race, then we're going backwards. If we look at Hawaiian as a citizenship, it's a little bit different. And then if we look at Hawaiian as a blood quantum because of our homestead training, let me riddle you with this. Yeah. Okay. This is for all you kids. If it takes two guys, two days to dig two holes, how long does it take one guy to dig half a hole? Half a day. Half a day. What do you say? If it takes two guys, two days to dig two holes, how long does it take one guy to dig just half a hole? How many days does it take to dig half a hole for one guy? One day, you said half a day. Two days. Two days, two days, one, one day, day half, half a day. day. What about you, Mesa? It might take you five, yeah. yeah three days. <laughs> three days. <laughs> yeah. The real question or the real answer is there's no such thing as half a hole. A hole is a hole. Oh my God. Right? <laughs> so there's no such thing as half a Hawaiian. Or a quarter Hawaiian or 15% Hawaiian. You either Hawaiian or you're not. Remember that. Okay, I want to start rephrasing <laughs> the word. Okay? I gotta learn more about yeah. that. Hawaiian culture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's stuff I gotta learn about. And so, all this pastry I come from, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh I got I got a gang of real for you, but that's that's the end of this this tour. So you folks have any questions, any observations? Just, I, I just heard the thing go to like 20%. Oh, you're the, okay. the power on the. Okay, yeah.
<laughs> Can you um use your phone? It like super, it like drained my phone. This whole thing. 